Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 30. We are in section 8.2, part 1. So in 8.1, 8, 8 we learned how to estimate mu when sigma is known. And this is not a very realistic situation. If we know sigma, the population standard deviation, usually we also know the mean, but not always. So now we're going to, in this section, section 8.2, we're going to talk about a realistic situation, which is what we normally run into in real life, and that is that we're going to try to do a confidence interval, or estimate mu using a confidence interval, when sigma is not known. This is a much more realistic situation. It's what we usually run into. Okay, so we're going to talk about degrees of freedom, that's something new, the student's t distribution, so we won't be using the z table, how to read that t table, finding critical values with the t table, and then computing confidence intervals and interpreting them in this situation. So um, the student's t distribution is an interesting distribution, and uh, we like to tell the story of this. In 1908, a fellow by the name of W.S. Gossett he discovered this student's uh, T distribution, but he worked for Guinness Brewing Company, and they did not allow their employees to publish research. Uh, most things say they discouraged it. When they discouraged it way back then, that means you couldn't do it. Um, so he wanted to publish his work anyway, so he did it under the name student or pseudonym student. And so he was the first statistician to recognize the importance of developing these statistical methods uh, to get reliable um, information about samples where we don't know the population standard deviation. So uh, we still call it student's t distribution uh, when in fact it was uh, uh, developed by Gossett. Okay, so now let's talk about this t distribution. So how do we calculate the t statistic? So t is going to be x bar minus mu over s over the square root of n. This may look very similar to the z for the central limit theorem, where we had x bar minus mu divided by sigma over the square root of n. So now we are, we don't have, there's no sigma, so we use s to estimate sigma. Okay, so we're using s to estimate the population uh, standard deviation, and, which is what we would normally do. Now we can rewrite the function like this, which is if you're not going to calculate this value in the denominator separately, then this is the uh, formula you probably want to use in your calculator. So either one is fine. They give you the same answer if you use your calculator correctly. So in any case, either one of these, you're going to have to use parentheses. If you want this to show up in your calculator correctly, you'll do a parenthesis, then x bar minus mu, and then the divide by, and then a parentheses s divided by square root of n, end your parentheses. So in the calculator, this would be, oh, start with a parenthesis, and then x bar, that value, minus mu, that value, then divided by, and then another parenthesis, and then s, and then divide by the square root of n, and we close our parentheses. This is how you have to do it in your calculator to get the right value. All right, now we, we mentioned something called the degrees of freedom, and we'll talk about what that is, or what that means in a minute. But for this, what you need to know is that this is one, n minus 1. n is our sample size, so the degrees of freedom are 1 minus, or 1 from that. So if n is 30, then the degrees of freedom would be 29. Okay? Now we have these requirements. So x has to be a normal distribution with a mean mu in order for us to use the t distribution. So now remember, um, we have to also have a sample mean, x bar, and we have to have the sample standard deviation, s, to use this. Okay? Now if we have the population standard deviation, then we would not use the t distribution, we'd use the z distribution. Okay. So here are our distributional requirements. And in statistics, in real life, if you're going to do a statistical test, your results will be meaningless unless you meet the assumptions 
for that test. In other words, if you don't meet the requirements for the test, then the results from the test are basically garbage. So um, we don't want to do that. So that's why I will always uh, emphasize checking these distributional requirements. Out in uh, my career, when I use statistics a lot, I often ran across people who would use these statistical tests um, without checking the requirements, and so they would think that they had an answer, and they didn't. So uh, please don't be that person, all right? So here are the requirements. We have to meet one or more or both of these requirements in order to use a T distribution. So either X has to have a normal distribution, or we have to have N greater than or equal to 30. Now, of course, we could have both. X could be normally distributed, and we could have a sample size of greater than 30. But we have to have at least one of these. If we don't have one of these, then we can't do the problem. Okay? We have to use some other method besides this to, to solve it, which we don't know in this class. So why? Well, the T distribution is only valid if we can assume that the distribution of X bar is normally distributed. That was the requirement up here when we talked about the T distribution, that it has to be a normal distribution. So if, um, if the data is normally distributed, if N is less than 30, and the data is normally distributed, we know that if, if X is normally distributed, if X is normally distributed, then x bar is also, okay? Now that only works for the normal distribution, all right? Um, so, and so x bar, if x is normally distributed, then x bar is also normally distributed no matter what n is. So if n is less than 30, then we cannot use the central limit theorem because the central limit theorem, the, the rule is 30 or higher, right? So in order for x bar to be normally distributed, x has to also be normally distributed. So if the data is not normally distributed and n is less than 30, we can't do the problem. So two, if n is 30 or more, then we can use the central limit theorem, which tells us that x bar is approximately normally distributed. So let's summarize this. If the so for the sample size, n, if n is less than 30, in order to use T, X has to also be normally distributed, okay? So that's for N less than 30. If N is greater than or equal to 30, then X can have any distribution as long as it uh, meets the requirements of having a mean and having the standard deviation. So, um, so that would be because of the CLT, the Central Limit Theorem. Now, let's talk about some examples of whether or not we can use T. So the first one says we have a simple random sample. That is what we need, simple random sample. I use, and lots of students like to use, SRS, capital letters, for simple random sample. And so I have a simple random sample of size n equals 15, and these are cats. Well, I love cats, so that's a good thing for me. If you don't like cats, pretend I said dogs or something. All right, we measure the amount of food each cat consumes in a day. And I left out my n there amount. So we, we measure that and we measure it in grams, so the weight. So the average amount eaten for our uh, eaten in a day for our data is given as x bar equals 62 grams and the standard deviation is 9.0 grams. And this is from our sample of n equal 15 cats. Can we use T? No. N is less than 30, and it does not say the data is normally distributed, okay? So if it's not in the problem, then if it doesn't actually say normally distributed, and N is not at least... 30, then no, you cannot use the T distribution here. So you couldn't do this problem with the methods we are going to learn in this introductory class. 
Now, let's look at number two. We take a simple random sample of n equals 40 birds, and specifically cardinals, and we measure their weight. And the sample data comes back as x bar equals 1.7 ounces and s is equal to 0.3 ounces. Can we use the t distribution? And the answer is yes, because n is at least 30. You notice it doesn't say anything about normally distributed, but we don't have to if n is at least 30. Now, number three, the heights of women are known to be normally distributed. We obtain a simple random sample of n equals 11 women. We have x bar equals 63.7 inches and s equals 1.9 inches. Can we use the t distribution? And the answer is yes, because the data is normally distributed. So even though n is less than 30, because it says normally distributed, we can use the t distribution. All right, I hope that helps you uh, understand when we can and cannot use uh, the t distribution. And we have the same thing for the section 8.1, whether we can use the confidence interval, whether we can even calculate it when we know sigma. We have these same requirements that either the data has to be normally distributed or we have to have at least 30 values in our sample. Okay, so that's enough for this video. Please remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. If you have questions, please come to virtual office hours. If you can't do that, email me, but you need to send me two things. First, you need to send me a picture of your work so that I can see um, what your thought is and how you're approaching the problem. The second thing I need is a picture of the problem because I don't have these all memorized. So if you send me those two things, then I can help you quickly through email. I hope you will take care of yourself, stay safe, and we hope to see you next time.